Hey guys, welcome back to day three of Fall Prevention Week. I'm Dawn, the owner of Aurora Independence, a mobile outpatient clinic here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today, I am going to be talking about simple home modifications that you can make in order to prevent falls. Because according to thriveforlife.com, a truly sustainable home is an accessible one. Think on that. How do we access our home? How easy is it for us? Depending on how easy or how difficult it is, this may increase our risk for falls. I left you yesterday with the idea that you don't need to change for your environment, that your environment should really be changing for you. So that's going to bring us right smack into some of the home modifications that I wanna to discuss today. One of the easiest things that we can do is change our lighting. And it is also one of the most important. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be borrowing from AARP and their program called Lighting the Way, A Key to Independence. I'll be sure to give credit up in the description of this video because as we age, our vision changes. Some of these changes include reduced accommodation. Basically, this is our eyes decreasing capacity to focus at close range. That's why we need readers sometimes. It also has reduced retinal illuminance. Basically, our retina is receiving less light as one ages because our pupil size becomes smaller and the lens becomes thicker. So let's put this into perspective. It's estimated for that same level of light. A typical 60 year old is actually gonna receive about one third less of the light that a 20 year old is gonna receive in their retina. That just means it's harder to see. We also have reduced contrast or color saturation. So you'll notice that reds sort of look like pinks. And we also have a reduced ability to discriminate blue colors. So all the different blues may start looking alike. These can have major impact on our safety. In order to fix our lighting issues, we have three goals. We wanna minimize glare, increase light, and increase contrast. So what does that even mean? In order to minimize glare, one of the first things we wanna do is make sure that we have some sort of covering over our lights. You do not wanna see directly into your light bulb. Additionally, you want to avoid clear lampshades. So you want something that's frosted or lightly colored so that it kind of diffuses that light. You can use light colored paint to help bounce the light around the room. And you can also place a task light right next to you rather than in front or behind you. And most importantly, make sure you have some shades or curtains that are going to help minimize glare from the windows. So how about increased light? How do we affect that? Well, that's gonna come down to what type of bulbs you're gonna use. So incandescent lights are gonna be warmer, but things may look a little less natural. And fluorescent lights due to technology can be warm or cold, but they actually tend to make things look more natural in your house. We recommend that you use fluorescent lighting in your house. And again, because of technology, those bulbs can come in many different colors, many different shapes, and many different intensities. So you can always find the right one that fits for you and your mood style and where your eyes are. As you just saw in that picture, black versus white is a lot easier to see than black versus gray. So you wanna consider that when you're setting up your own house. What's the lighting like? And what's the floor color like versus the walls around your stairwell or even in your bathroom? Is everything white? Maybe it's time to put some tape down or a special rug that'll help you figure out where the edges of any steps are or any thresholds that might be changing. When considering where to put lighting, you also wanna think about placement. Placement can be very, very important. If you put a light directly in front of you, you might actually be looking at the light bulb while you're doing your work and again, creating glare. 
If you put the light behind you, you may actually end up with a shadow that kind of puts your workspace in a dark spot you can't actually see. If this were happening in your kitchen, you might run the risk of cutting those fingers because you can't see them. So the best placement is to actually put that light just slightly next to you and a little bit around your head. So somewhere around here. So that light goes directly to the area that you're working. You're going to be able to see the task at hand better if the light is actually kind of close. So you don't want that light all the way up here and away from the task that you're actually doing. You'd like it a little bit closer. So this is where lamps next to the couch is important or next to your bed where you're going to be reading or wherever you are. Next, I wanted to talk about the bathroom and ways that you can make simple changes to make the bathroom a little bit safer. The bathroom and our stairs are two of the most dangerous places in our homes. So when it comes to bathroom, what's the easiest thing to do? Well, the number one thing is install some grab bars. I know some of them look pretty medical, but nowadays with technology, they have a bunch of different mats and finishes. And when you do custom grab bars, you can place them where you want. So for some people, they hide them to look like towel racks when they know they're strong enough to hold on. Again, it might be helpful to have a therapist come out and really look at how you interact with the space and help you figure out where the best placement will be for your grab bars. Additionally, I want you to think about your rugs. What kind of shower rug do you have? And do you have any type of texture inside of the tub? These things can be really helpful, but they can also be tripping hazards. So make sure everything's in good condition and it's securely placed and it's in a good spot. The last thing you can do without needing a whole bathroom renovation is actually just adding a shower chair or knowing what kind of shower chair would fit and have it in a closet ready to use in case you or a family member needs it. Now, shower chairs come in many different shapes, many different forms, many different prices. So again, it's really important to get one fitted for your house, but shower chairs can be life-saving. The last thing I want to talk about is your living room. Now, believe it or not, a lot of falls happen here. Why? Because there's usually a lot of clutter. I brought this up almost in every single video, and I know that we don't consider it clutter, but all of those extra things that we have in a room can actually become tripping hazards. So like I said, I mentioned my dog's bones. I cannot tell you the number of times I have tripped on them. My husband's tripped on them. My dog's tripped on them. So it's really important to have a place for everything so that everything can be in its place. Without that, you're just running the risk of falling. These are just some simple ways that you guys can make little adjustments in your house in order to reduce your risk for falls. Take a moment, look around your room. What's there? What could you trip on? If there is something that you can trip, find a place for it. If, if there's a rug that's been curling at the edges and has been a tripping hazard in the past, maybe it's time to remove it or figure out a way to securely fasten it to the ground. Overall, it's up to you guys to look around, find some hazards, or call someone who can actually help you out, like an occupational therapist. We can do a home safety evaluation to help you determine which areas in your home might be a risk factor for increased falls. Thanks for joining guys. I hope you learned a little something. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll do my best to get back to them. Thanks.